Welcome to my channel. Today I am going to share with you a powerful and life-changing story that was shared with me by someone else. This is a story of a near-death experience that occurred as a result of rebellion against Christian doctrine and teachings. This story will take you on a journey of self-discovery and redemption. The events that led up to this person's near-death experience will shock and amaze you. But the most important thing is how it ultimately led them back to the path of salvation and redemption. This is a story that will leave you contemplating your own choices and beliefs, and will make you question whether you are truly living a life that is in line with your faith. So sit back, get comfortable, and get ready for an experience that will change your perspective on life, death, and the afterlife. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. As a child, I was raised in a devout Christian home. My parents instilled in me strong moral values and a love for God. But as I entered my teenage years, I began to question the doctrine and teachings of the church. I felt constrained by the strict rules and regulations and longed for a life of freedom and experimentation. I started to rebel against my upbringing and turn my back on my faith. I started to challenge my parents' beliefs and values, and I was determined to live my life on my own terms. I became more and more distant from my family, and I began to surround myself with people who share my rebellious attitude. I began to indulge in a lifestyle of partying and immorality. I thought that I was living life to the fullest, and I didn't care about the consequences of my actions. I thought I was invincible and that nothing could bring me down. But little did I know my actions would lead me to a near-death experience that would change my life forever. As I continued to rebel against my faith and my family, I began to seek out new friends who shared my desire for freedom and pleasure. I met a group of people who were into drugs and alcohol, and who had no regard for the law or for the well-being of others. They were the kind of people who seemed exciting and dangerous, and I was drawn to their reckless lifestyle. I started to hang out with them more and more, and soon I was caught up in their world of parties, drugs, and crime. I thought it was all a big adventure and I didn't think about the harm it was causing to myself and others. I was too caught up in the thrill of the moment to realize the danger I was putting myself in. I was young and naive and I didn't see the slippery slope I was on. I thought that I had everything under control. I also started to explore my sexuality. I had multiple boyfriends and even more casual relationships. I thought that I was in control and that I could have anyone I wanted. I didn't think about the emotional pull it was taking on me or the pain I was causing to others. I was constantly searching for validation and love, but I never found it. Instead, I was left feeling empty and alone. I didn't understand why, despite having so many partners, I couldn't find the happiness and fulfillment that I craved. I started to explore relationships with women as well. I thought that maybe what I was looking for was a deeper connection that I couldn't find with men. But even in these relationships, I found myself feeling empty and unfulfilled. I was constantly jumping from one relationship to another, never staying with one person for too long. I thought that if I just kept searching, I would eventually find what I was looking for. One fateful night, I decided to go out exploring with my friends. We were on a trip, staying in a hotel in a city. We had planned to go out to a club, to take drugs and drink. I thought it would be a fun adventure, but little did I know that it would be a near-death experience that would change my life forever. I started the night with high spirits and a carefree attitude. I took drugs and drank alcohol, not thinking about the consequences of my actions. My friends urged me to continue, thinking that I was just drunk and would be fine. I went to a club and danced the night away, not paying attention to my surroundings or the people I was with. I was too caught up in the moment to realize that I was putting myself in danger. As the night went on, I started to feel the effects of the drugs and alcohol. I became disoriented and lost. I didn't know how to get back to the hotel and I was running out of money and energy. I was stranded in the city and I knew that if I didn't find help soon, I would be in serious trouble. This experience made me realize the importance of being responsible for my actions and the importance of being aware of my surroundings. It also made me realize how precious life is and how easily it can be taken away. This experience made me change. During that incident, a group of gangs had taken notice of my vulnerability and tried to take advantage of me. The next thing I knew, I couldn't remember anything. I didn't know where I was or how I had gotten there. I was disoriented and confused. I soon found out that I had been taken to an unknown location. The gangs had planned to sell me as a sex slave. I was terrified and didn't know what to do. I was trapped and alone with no way to escape. I was in that state for days, not knowing what was happening to me. I was physically and emotionally abused, and I thought that I was going to die in that place. 
As I lay in the dark, damp room where I was being held captive, I could feel my strength leaving me. I knew that I was dying and I felt a deep sense of despair. Suddenly, I had a near-death experience. It was as if my soul had left my body and I was floating in a dark void. I saw a figure emerging from the darkness and I immediately knew it was Satan. He seemed to be coming to claim my life. I was filled with fear and dread as he approached me. He looked at me with cold, soulless eyes and said, You have lived a life of sin and immorality. You have turned your back on God and now you will pay the price. You belong to me now. I knew that I was doomed and I felt hopelessness. I was taken on a journey through a seemingly never-ending maze of twisting and turning corridors. Each corridor seemed to lead to a different memory of my past, a different sin or mistake I had made. I could see the faces of the people I had hurt, the relationships I had destroyed, the lies I had told. I felt a deep sense of guilt and shame. As I walked deeper into the maze, the darkness around me seemed to grow more intense. The air grew colder and I could hear the sound of screams and wails coming from the shadows. I knew that this was the place where Satan claimed the souls of the damned. I knew that there was no way out of this place that I was doomed to wander these corridors forever. But just when I thought all hope was lost, I heard a faint voice calling out to me. It was a voice of love and compassion and it seemed to be coming from the distance. I knew it was the voice of Jesus and I felt a sense of hope and reassurance. Soon as Satan heard Jesus' voice, he let go of me and disappeared into the darkness. I couldn't find him anywhere. Jesus then came to me and took me by the hand and led me through the darkness, and as we walked, the darkness slowly began to fade away. We emerged into a place of incredible beauty. The sky was a brilliant blue, the sun was shining, and the grass was a lush green. I could see tall trees swaying in the breeze and a gentle stream flowing nearby. We walked together through the gardens of heaven, and as we did, I was surrounded by the most incredible sights and sounds. I saw angels singing and playing music, I saw people laughing and dancing, and I saw the most beautiful flowers and trees. Everything was so perfect and so peaceful. As we continued to walk through the gardens of heaven, Jesus began to show me different dimensions of this incredible place. We walked through fields of flowers and pastures of green, and I saw animals of all kinds roaming freely. I saw lions lying down with lambs, and I saw eagles soaring high in the sky. I felt like I was in a place where there was no fear and no harm, a place where all creatures lived in perfect harmony. Jesus then led me to a place where I saw people who were praying and worshiping. They were singing hymns and praising God, and I felt a sense of awe and reverence wash over me. I knew that this was a place where people came to be close to God, to feel His presence, and to be filled with His love and grace. We walked on and we came to a place where I saw people who were sitting in groups and they were studying the Word of God, they were discussing and sharing their experiences and understanding of God. I knew that this was a place of learning and growth, a place where people could deepen their faith and understanding of God. We continued to walk and Jesus showed me many more dimensions of heaven, each one more beautiful and amazing than the last. I saw places of rest, where people were able to relax and rejuvenate after a long journey on earth. I saw places of work, where people were using their talents and skills to serve God and others. I saw places of play and laughter, where people were enjoying each other's company and having fun. As we walked and Jesus showed me these different dimensions of heaven, I felt my heart fill with wonder and gratitude. I knew that this was a place where I could truly be myself, where I could use my gifts and talents for the good of others, and where I could live in perfect harmony with God and all creation. As we walked, Jesus then took me to three other dimensions that held the mystery of earth. The first dimension was a place where I saw people who were working to spread the word of God and to help others. They were working in different capacities from being pastors and evangelists to being missionaries and humanitarian workers. I saw them working in different parts of the world, from the most remote villages to the busiest cities. I saw them preaching the gospel, providing for the needs of the poor, and helping people in all kinds of ways. The second dimension was a place where I saw people who were working to heal the earth. They were working to protect the environment, to conserve natural resources, and to promote sustainable living. They were planting trees, cleaning rivers and oceans, and working to preserve endangered species. I saw them working to create a more sustainable and livable world for all people. The third dimension was a place where I saw people who were working to bring peace to the world. They were working to resolve conflicts to promote understanding and tolerance, and to build bridges between different cultures and religions. I saw them working to create a world where all people could live in peace and harmony. As I saw these different dimensions, I felt purpose and calling. I realized that my life on earth could have a much deeper meaning than I ever imagined, and that I could be a part of something much bigger than myself. 
I understood that my life could be used to make a positive impact on the world, to bring hope and healing to others, and to bring glory to God. As I realized how much God loved me and how much he had planned for my life, I knew that I had to return to earth and to live my life in a way that honored God and served others. I knew that I had to change my life and to live for something bigger than myself. As I came back to my senses, Jesus then looked at me with love and said, My child, you have been given a second chance. I have sent the police to rescue you from your kidnappers and they will be there soon. I want you to go back to earth and use your experience to help others. Share your story and let it be a testimony to others of my love and grace. And always remember that no matter how far you stray, my love for you will never change. I felt a sense of peace and reassurance wash over me as Jesus spoke. I knew that I had been forgiven and that my past mistakes did not define me. I knew that I had been given a new beginning and that my future was bright. Just as Jesus promised, a police arrived and rescued me from my kidnappers. I was reunited with my family and friends and I shared my experience with them. My ND had a profound impact on my life and I dedicated myself to living a life that honored God and served others. I became a powerful witness of Jesus' love and grace and I helped many people to come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. I realized that my life is not my own but it belongs to Jesus and I will do whatever he asks me to do. I will go wherever he sends me and I will do whatever he calls me to do. I am eternally grateful for the second chance he gave me and I will spend the rest of my days living for him alone. The Bible verse that resonates with my experience is Proverbs 28 13 which says, Whoever conceals their sins does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. This verse reminds me that being honest and confessing my sins is the only way to find true forgiveness and peace. In conclusion, I urge you to turn to Jesus, confess your sins, and ask him for forgiveness. He is the only way to salvation and eternal life in heaven. And always remember that God's love for you is unending, and he will always give you a chance to come back to him. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you've been inspired and touched by this near-death experience. If you were moved by this story, please consider sharing it with your friends and family. Also, please like and subscribe to my channel to get more content like this. Your support means a lot to me and will help me continue to share story and message with others. Remember that God's love is unending and he always gives us a chance to come back to him. Have a blessed day.